Hey guys, this is Dapper Dragon here, and we're gonna do a Burning Abyss uh, deck profile here. We're gonna do a Burning Abyss deck profile. You know, we all know that BA is the best deck, and uh, I got the little trap fair in here. That's a, a I call it kind of budget. It's kind of budget. If 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 you got a a few shackles on your side, you can build this deck. And you know what? It's it's fairly competitive. It it'll win you a few games at locals. You depending on how good you are. Dap Dapper's not very good, but you know Dapper sees success with this, so. Here we go to the deck profile, ladies and gents. The first thing you're gonna wanna play, is you're gonna wanna play three tour guides. This tour guide right here, search any three, level three, from your from your deck. Negate those effects, negate those effects. Them suckers don't blow themselves up. However, this shit'll get ashed. This shit will get ash. It's not always the best play, but it's a nice play if they don't got that ash. So try to bait that ash first. You might be looking at these three artworks and being like, Dapper, what are you going to do? What are you doing? You know, Dapper's broke. Da it takes a lot of money to play Yu-Gi-Oh. Dapper's broke as shit. Okay. So you got your three tour guides. Best go on the deck. Best go on the deck. Your next one, you're going to want three Fiendish Warrior Rhinos. I'm going to argue that this is your best summon right here. This is your best summon. Because, you know, it's not as, like... They're not going to ash this until it's in the graveyard. But you can, you know... Depending on what you got, you can... You can start playing around with them a little bit. But yeah, three rhinos. Uh, this causes your BAs not to be blown up because, you know... He negates them effects. He negates them effects. So... And then when he goes to the graveyard, he dumps a card from your, your grave. So, great card and BA... I'm showing you your starter cards first. You want to you want to know these starter cards? You then you got three graph, three graph. I like to. He's also a great normal summon as long as you got another BA in hand. Great normal summon as long as you got the other BA. This card, is, it's freaking amazing. It's freaking amazing. It's probably uh, the, I call him the second best BA. Second best BA. And he has a an effect where if once he's sent to the graveyard, he'll dump another another mount. He'll special summon a monster from the deck over onto your side of the field. So that's a good card. That's a good card. Now we got Seer. I only play two of these suckers. You do not want to draw Seer, but this is a grinded deck. This deck definitely grinds out. You uh you you definitely want two Seers. You don't want the third one. I I find the third one a little bit cloggy. But uh, his effect is once he goes to the graveyard, uh, his special summons uh, another BA monster from the graveyard. So. Great low card. He's part of the big combo. Now, you play uh, two Scum. And you also play two Fafa. Now, the reason you play uh, two of these is you don't want to draw multiple of the same name of BAs. But they're both extremely useful. I love having like a... I love having the Scum in the graveyard so I can get that tour guide search. As long as I remember to, res to resolve that Scum. Because, you know, uh, we always be forgetting. Now, Fafa... Now, Fafa's great for that uh, target and banishing. He's uh, great to either see him, uh, send off Beatrice or Tatas for another engine we got in here. We'll, we'll show you that engine in a second. Now, here's your one of BAs. You got one Baba, one Libic, one Cow Cab, one Alec. Now, you just want these for the extra names. The, the Libic does come up, and, the, you know, the Baba can come up at, towards the end of the game. Sometimes the Alec can come up a little bit, but, you know, not as often as you would uh, hope for. Cow Cab's only good on your, uh, when it's your turn, and, like, you don't want to deal with that set card they got back there. So you just want them to go ahead and activate it or pop it to their hand. That's about it. That's about it. But mostly these are used right here for, uh, you know, just to activate the effects so that you can uh, go ahead and go into your Link 3 go into your uh, XYZ plays. Now, the engine that we're going to be playing here is we're obviously going to be playing Dragoon. Dragoon is a motherfucking beast. He's a motherfucking beast. Probably should be banned, but that's okay. That's okay, ladies and gents, you know. It, he's just really good and really splashable in this deck. God forbid you draw the Red Eyes Fusion, but, like, it's not the worst thing in the world to draw really any of these. It's not the worst thing, because you got other plays. You know what? I'll show you a co some combos at the end of the video. I'll show you some combos. Okay, now, as far as the spell cards go, we don't play a lot of spells in this deck. We play one Foolish. Foolish Bear is amazing. It, it can sometimes just unbreak your hand. You got the one Rhino. 
or you got like you just got the one graph but you don't got another ba and like you can at least try to make a play out of it like th this card it, i say it's almost mandatory in this deck it's like it's super mandatory it's the best mega one in the game um i play two pot of desires two pot of desires now i know what you're saying why not prosperities well i'll show you right now on the screen that's that's why i don't play three prosperities Dap is broke as fuck. Dap is broke as fuck. If you ever watched my Star Wars episode, you know why I'm broke. I lost that diamond. It's crazy. Now, three pot, like two pot of desires. I don't like drawing desires off desires. This might not be mathematically correct, but I just like desires at two. If you got the cash flow, three prosperities. I'm telling you right now, three prosperities. It's a, it's a better card, but I'm trying to make this a little bit budget. I'm going to have the amount that these cards cost on the screen so that you guys kind of know what you're getting yourself into and it's going to be lowest verified on tcg player now this is trap ba so we're going to play three trap trick this is essentially an extra normal trap and you know in your deck so like if you're playing three normal traps you got six of them you got access to six of them you have to be playing this card you have to be playing this card if you're playing trap bas or any like kind of trap deck you want to be playing trap trick that's just how that is. That's how that is, ladies and gents. I play two Dynamiscus, two Torrential, two different dimension fusion dimension grounds, two dimensional barriers, and I play two evenly. Now, I know what you might be thinking that evenly right here is a side deck card, but this this build is not optimal, ladies and gents. This is a more budget style build, and I know evenly's. Right now on the cheapest are like $13, $14. I understand that. However, I wanted a variety of cards against Rogue and Meta like that can help me out. Because sometimes your locals, you got heroes, you got stuff like that going on. And like you need the dimensional barrier just for certain matchups. Different dimension ground it will shut off some decks for that turn. You will just bust their ass up. Dragon Link does not like this card. Any graveyard reliant deck doesn't like this card. Torrential just for the board wipes. Uh, Dynamiscus for the discard and you know the banish that's great evenly match if you brick but you have evenly match and you think you can survive the turns with your trap cards and just leave them with kind of a weaker board you can just evenly go into Zeus that's the idea here not necessarily the most optimal way to play this but again ladies and gents I'm trying to you know save you a few shekels Yu-Gi-Oh can be expensive Yu-Gi-Oh can, Yu can be expensive now the next uh cards I play is I play three fiend roofing this is definitely a card I want to see in my opening hand it's just another kind of like form of this interruption or another form of seeing like throwing a scar into the grave because sometimes I don't want the Beatrice to do that or it just whatever it may be depending on my my starting board like sometimes I want the disruption with the Fafa or sometimes I want uh the scar in the grave because I know I can last the turn and then set up my big plays next turn uh, Fiend Griefing, I, I just want to see it in my opening hand. Uh, essentially, like you said, playing six of these because of Trap Tricks, so I would go with three Fiend Griefing. I, I, it's, it's a perfect BA card, ladies and gents. It's a perfect BA card. Now, to set up all your plays to make sure that they all go through, you gotta play three strikes. You gotta play three Solemn Strikes right here. Like, this, this card, it, I don't really need to explain it. It just it makes sure that those uh, Trap Plays go through. Or like some problematic card hits the board and you don't want to deal with it. Now, since we don't play a lot of spell cards, you know, Imperial Order. Imperial Order, there's nothing more I can say about it. That card is b b broken. It's broken. So, this is a 45 card deck. I would advise going to 50. I just didn't have the, uh, the resources right now. I just didn't have the card sleeves that, you know, match these. That's the reason I'm going to 45. But the reason that you're doing not 40 is you don't want to draw into that Dragoon Engine. That Dragoon Engine will bust you up if you draw the wrong card. It's not the end of the world, but you don't want to see Dark Magician and Red Eyes in your hand. Red Eyes Fusion in your hand is not terrible depending on what you drew. Two Dante. Two Dante is all you need. You know, he's best boy in the deck. Best boy in the deck. You want two Dante. One Beatrice. You know, self-explanatory. He's a foolish burial. With a body, that's what that is. Foolish burial with the body, and if they're if they're dumb enough to to freaking uh, pop it, then you're good. 
uh, you're gonna you're gonna want one Zeus, one Zeus. This card right here, I know it's a little bit pricey, but there isn't any card that can do what it does. The most important part of this card is it doesn't destroy its sins. So that way you can you know you can out uh you can out pretty much anything. This thing can out pretty much anything. I don't play the downward because I don't have a downward. That's the only reason I don't play it. If you have downward downward magician, play downward magician. Downer Magician really makes this a little bit better. You can make a four material Zeus uh, in a good, in a uh, in certain situations. Now we play Verte Anaconda. That's obvious. You play Verte for the Dragoon play. Play one IP uh, and one Nightmare. This is in case that you draw the Red Eyes Fusion, and it's a it's a really good defensive play. It's normal play. I'm sure you guys all know about it. I also play the other Nightmare Package just for utility cards. You just need them for the utility. Uh, Topological Trispana. Don't sleep on this, boy. Don't sleep on this. This card right here can win you games against back row heavy decks. This will win you games. Especially if they do not have a response to it. That, that card will win you games. You play one Link Spider. The Link Spider here is in case you get into Beerud, so you can get rid of the token and start going into your plays. Or just in case that... Um, you got your Dynamiscus coming back. It's a normal monster, so you can hit the Link Spider and start Link Climbing. You need one Link Spider. Uh, Cherubini. Uh, Cherubini is a underrated card in the Burning Abyss. Cherubini is uh, really good if you've already exhausted some plays and you're deep into late game. Or if you have Prosperities, it's a good banish target too. Like, And it helps your stuff from not getting blown up, depending on what kind of play you're going into. I play one Boral Sword. Uh... If you have access code Taka, this is, needs to be access code Taka. Um, however, on a budget version, Boral Sword is not a bad card. It's a good OTK because th that's the problem with uh, Burning Abyss. It's great at managing your resources, but it doesn't have really big OK OTK potential. You're gonna obviously play one Dragoon and one Dante. Dragoon, big boy, not fair card. Uh, Dante, if they're dumb enough. To pop the Beatrice, this boy just you win the game. I'm just telling you right now, you win the game if a purple Dante comes out. So that is the extra deck for this. It's a pretty simple, pretty basic extra deck. Now for my side deck, uh, I'm, I'm sure this is not optional. Uh, opti optimal. Sorry, Dapper can't talk. Dapper uh, didn't go to a good school. He went to a public school. Don't worry about that. So uh, Gamma Seal. I play three Gamma Seal. Uh, just in case, like, there is some sort of problematic monster I can't get over, Gamma Seal's gonna take care of that for me. He, he's gonna do the work, he's gonna put in the work, it comes up. Um, I'm sure there's better cards you can be playing, but this is a great budget option. So, free Gamma Seal. Now, uh, I also play Cosmic Cyclone. You never know when you're gonna run into Mystic Mind. That's all I can say. You never know, go, never know when you're going to run into Mystic Mine or some bullshit. So you need some back row mo removal that isn't monster related. Uh, Harpy's Feather Duster, Call by the Grave. You need both of these. Like, you really need both of these. I, You could argue that Call by the Grave should be in the main. Um, it, it doesn't come up enough for me, but just because it's a one of, like, it's... It's hard for me to put it in the deck. I, I'm probably wrong on this, but you know what? This, this is just my deck profile. You know, screw off. It's my deck profile. Um, I play two Ash Blossom and two Artifact Lancia. The reason I play two of these is because I don't own a third. That's the exact reason. Uh, Ash Blossom, she's generic. That's all I can say. She's generic, hits a lot of decks. Lancia, Lancia is for like your Dino matchups, for your Eltledge matchups, uh, if you're playing, like, um, Infernoids for some reason, like, uh, th this will get you to it. This will get you to it. And, uh, the final tech in here, uh, just because of, uh, Gabe Vargas, like, uh, there's a spicy little tech right here. It's Dimensional Shifter. Dimensional Shifter and BA. You're like, Dapper, you crazy as hell. You crazy as hell for wanting D-Shifter in here. However, do you know that Zeus is a cod? Zeus is a cod, ladies and gentlemen. Zeus is a cod. 
Okay, it, as long as Zeus is a card, Dimensional Shifter is good. This shuts off most decks first turn. Crazy. If you're going second, um, this shuts off their turn. I would take like certain things out for this, but I'll, I'll show you that right now. So like in your main deck, if you play, if you need your Dimensional Shifter, if you're going second turn and the two, depending on what they're playing, you can obviously take out Dimensional Barrier, but I would. Definitely take out two of these. You don't need that, and I would take out one of the Fiend Griefings. Then you got your D-Shifter in there, and it's the same. It's like, depending on what you're playing on, like, your, on a, if you're going second, that depends on what your side deck is going to go into. I think that's that's pretty common knowledge, but I just, I don't see a lot of uh, profiles doing that, telling you what you sh maybe should take out on, like, their certain builds. But, hey, I'm going to cut right now to the, uh, I'm going to cut right now to the, uh, to the combos. We're going to do some nasty combos. Well, I'll show you a combo. I'm going to show you why Tor God is the best card in this deck. Now, let's, it doesn't really matter what these four cards are, but let's, let's see what we got. Okay, yeah. This great hand. This is a great hand. Okay, now we're going to assume that there's no interruptions that going to happen to us. So, first thing you're going to do, normal summon Tor God. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to go in your you're gonna go in your deck here. You're gonna you're gonna bring yourself out of graph. You need graph. Let's right, shuffle your deck. Dap is not good at shuffling. Dap is a little bit of a noob, but this play is not newbie. Okay, you go overlay that. You're gonna make Dante. You're gonna make Dante, classic play. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna detach, graph, you're gonna mill one. You mill the desires. That's great considering we have a desires in our hand. That's freaking perfect. Okay, now you're gonna go graph effect. You're gonna grab yourself a seer. You want that seer. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to link these two away. You don't need these no more. And then from there, you're going to go into Verte Anaconda. That's the move. You're going to go in Verte. Verte is your main play here. Let me scoot that a little closer so you can see a little bit better. Now, once you go from Verte, you're going to go Chain Link 1, Seer. Summon Dante. Chain link to Dante. Add Seer to hand. You want to do it this way so that you chain block your opponent and you're always going to get that Dante back. So, what you're going to do, special, you're going to get the Seer to hand, special Dante. That's that's what's going to happen here. Now, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to, you're going to make Beatrice. You're going to make Beatrice. And then you're going to pitch... You have a couple choices here. You can pitch the scum, or you can pitch the seer. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pitch the seer just so I can keep this loop going. This is kind of like infinite resource loop. Now you're gonna use Predator Plant. Uh, you're gonna use his effect, 2,000 life points, ditch. Now what's important about uh, Predator Plant is that he cannot be ashed because he sends this for cost. So you send the fusion, you're gonna copy the spell, and then you're gonna send your red eyes and your dark magician. Pop, pop. Go ahead and shuffle your deck. Cool. Now you're gonna bring out your big boy. You're gonna bring out your red eyes, Dragoon. Now, you see what we have here is we still have plays. So what I'm gonna do after this, I'm gonna desires. So I'm gonna desire, I'm gonna pay my cost. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So you lost those ten. You draw a two. What did we get? Well, this is a hell of a hand. This is a hell of a hand. So what we're going to do. 
is we're going to set to and then we're going to pass our turn and what's so good about this is that when you send with the beatrice you can send the other fava if you want to that way you can send the scarm with this or because you only you're only playing two scarms so that's fine so that you can get a search on the next turn but you have one interruption two interruptions and you actually have three interruption interruptions if you really want to play it a certain way and then you got this interruption and this interruption it just depends on how you want to play it out and what they're playing but this is a great combo now i'm going to do a cold hand and we're going to try to play out the cold hand and see what happens so we're, we're going to try this again and we're just going to do a cold hand to see what we get one graph it's a good start Ah, oh, we got one of the bricks. Desires. Tour God. Now, in this situation, I would want to save the Tour God. I really would. I'm going to save that Tour God. I'm going to go Graf, Alec. I'm not going to explain this play because you guys all know what's about ready to happen. You're going to go boom. You're going to send the Graf. And then after the graph, you're going to grab your Sia. Boop, grab your Sia. Again, link those two away. Anaconda. Chain link one, chain link two. Boom. Boom. So that now you got your Beatrice. You'll send the fusion. Then you send your materials. And then you're going to summon Dragoon. Get a Desires. Those aren't too bad. Those aren't too bad. Now, you're going to want something to pitch off Dragoon. Um, I would advise pitching the Dimensional Barrier because I feel like this different Dimension Ground is just a better one to have on board, and you're definitely not going to want to pitch your Tour Guide. I'll show you guys one more combo that involves drawing the Red Eyes Fusion because you guys need to know how to deal with that. Okay, let's assume you draw the Red Eyes Fusion. And this is your five cards starting out. What you're going to do is your classic play of Graph, then you go Libic. Because that, that's a fine play right there. You might think going right into Red Eye Fusion might be the move just so you can get the other two bricks out of your deck and you don't mill, but it's a highly low probability you're going to mill this. So, Dante... Send graph mill one. Okay, we let me show you guys. We milled it evenly. That's fine. Graph effect. Seer. Okay, you got your seer. Now you're gonna link these two away. And you're going to go into IP Mascarena. Chain link one, chain link two. You got Dante back. He's back. The boy's back in town. You're going to summon Beatrice. You're going to pitch the Seer to do that.
Okay, not a bad play to start off with. You're gonna set one of your Dynamiscuses. And for your follow-up turn, you got a Red Eyes Fusion to go into, and you got a Dino. So like, this isn't an all loss situation. You got an interruption here with Beatrice, and you also have another interruption with IP if you really want to, if you're gonna try to push for game. So like, let's assume that our opponent, we have to do this. Let's assume, boop, that has to happen. And then we gotta send that Seer. We gotta send the Seer. Well, not the Seer, but we gotta send the, uh, like, what do you call it? Fafa. Send the Fafa, you banish something until the end phase. We all love Fafa. Boop. Now, you got, you're, you're gonna use the Dante, you're gonna add the Seer back. And the reason that you want this Seer back is because when you activate Dynamiscus, you're going to pop Banish something. You're going to send the Seer. That's going to be engraved. You got your Dante back. Now you're going to go into for another interruption. You're going to go to Nightmare Unicorn. And then this is going to happen. Dante is not once per turn, ladies and gentlemen. So, let's see what we got here. You could honestly, this is what I would do. I would take back the graph. That way, you can pitch the graph. You spin one of their things back to their deck. Graph's going to summon... And then I would bring out something like either Scum. Or you're going to bring out Libic. It's your choice depending on what you want. Do you want the follow-up play? Or do you want to negate a monster's effects on the field? So for me, I want the follow-up play. So let's just do this at the bottom. I'm gonna do this. He's gonna destroy himself. Fine. Now you got the follow up play. Let's say this is your end board at the end, and that's how that went. You really screwed with him. Now, in face, Scom, don't forget that. Grab your tour guide. You're gonna draw for ton. Okay, you got it. This isn't a bad hand. Now, depending on what you want to do here, you can go into... There's a lot of options that you just gave yourself. Let's say they got three monsters on board. They got three monsters on board. So, if they got three monsters on board, I would go into the Red Eyes Fusion. Just to bring out Red Eyes, but it locks you into just that Red Eyes for the turn. And then you got a decent amount of damage. You can pop two, probably hit one. Boom, you, you're good. However... Most likely, they're going to have some interruption set up for you. So that might be another good reason to go into the Red Eyes Fusion. Because you can hit the Seer and get your Dante back. And then start going into some other plays. But if you let's say you want to go like this. You want to go Tour Guide. I'm gonna go tour guide into Seer, actually. I think. So I'm gonna go tour guide into Seer. Then I'm gonna overlay into a Dante. I'm gonna. Pitch the Seer. And then I'm on mill three. One, two, three. Rhino effect's gonna activate.
I'm gonna send a Fafa for another interruption that gets rid of the, one of their boys. And then we got the chain link one, chain link two, the Seer Dante thing. So I'm gonna have another Dante in attack. And I got Seer back in my hand. And I still got the Red Eyes Fusion, ladies and gents. I still got the Red Eyes Fusion. Now, what I would do here is you've already gotten rid of some of their monsters. I'm going in the Boral Sword. I'm going in the Boral Sword. I'm getting rid of these right here. Dante's going to add another one to my hand. I'm going to add the Fafa, because I love the Fafa for interruptions. You got a Boral Sword and a 2500 Dante. They got one monster left on board. Attack with Dante. Let's just say you get over it. Boral Sword effect. Goes to defense. Hits the other one, gains half, hits again. And let's make the assumption that they got like 2,000 life points left. That's fine. That's fine by daddy here. Main phase two, you're going to set the paleo. Because you got an interruption off the Fafa, or you can get back a Dante. But what we're going to do is we're going to overlay Dante into Zeus. Since he attacked that turn, you got a Zeus. So you got them down pretty far and you got a lot of interruption potential with this. So you can Dynomiscus take away one of their things and banish another one of their things with Falfa in your hand. And you didn't even have to use Red Eyes Fusion. If it somehow gets to turn three, you got Red Eyes Fusion to crack them scowls. Um, hopefully this helped, ladies and gents. Uh, this is my first deck profile of a deck that I really love and I really love playing. Um... I hope you have a good day, ladies and gents. And, you know, if, if you like this content, maybe like, comment, and subscribe.